ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه ادى الامانه ادى الامانه ونصح لهذه الامه فتركنا على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها الا هالك عباد الله اوصيكم ونفس الفقير الذليل بتقوى الله عباد الله اتقوا الله حيث ما كنتم اتقوا الله ما استطعتم اتقوا الله في اموالكم اتقوا الله في ارحامكم اتقوا الله يا عباد الله dear servants slaves of allah be mindful of allah put your fear and your hope in allah jalla wa ala and understand that your highest priority the most important aspect in your life in your actions and your speech is to obtain taqwa in Allah to be mindful of Allah regardless of where you are of who you are what it is that you are doing be mindful of Allah Allah azza wa jal fi kitabihi al-kareem in his blessed words he said jalla fi ulah ba'da a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا والقول السديد التوحيد لا اله الا الله محمد رسول الله او يو بليف هاف تقوى ان الله ان سي ذات ويتش از موست افيرمد that there is no god worthy of worship except the god allah and muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his final message yaghfir lakum dhunuban yuslih lakum a'malakum wa yaghfir lakum dhunubakum wa man yuti'i allah wa rasulah fa ta'atu allah wa ta'atu ar-rasul marbutatan ta'atu wahidah if you obtain taqwa in Allah and you say the kalima la ilaha illa Allah Muhammadur Rasulullah Allah will make righteous your affairs and forgive all of your sins and shortcomings and you will indeed be of those who have succeeded fawzan azima the greatest success and the greatest achievement is to be an honored slave of Allah ومن يجزي من الله and who can reward you but Allah who can forgive you but Allah whoever obeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger it is the same obedience then to them is the greatest success jannatu naeem khalidina fiha abada نسأل الله أن يجعلنا من أهلها جنة في الفردوس ينزل الله خير الكلام هو كلام الله جل وعلا The greatest words are the words of Allah جل في علا Words that do not match or mimic any of his creations فهو منزه عن التشبيه والتمثيل And the greatest example was the example of Muhammad أبا القاسم صلى الله عليه وسلم Who was the epitome who was the greatest example of the most upright conduct of any human being. Salawatu Rabbi wa salamu alayhi. And he warned the Sahaba and I warn you today of the innovations and fabrications in this deen. To take matters from mere opinion and ideas and to try to implement them as ibadah, as acts of worship, these are called bid'ah. 
And these bid'ah are from misguidance. And they will lead you down a deep, dark path. And at the end of that path is no reward but a severe punishment. <laughs> Firstly, I would like to thank you all for taking the time out of your busy lives to come to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this Jumu'ah. Allahumma gfir liman hadara hadihi jumu'ati wa li abawayhi wa iftah lil maw'idati qalbahu wa udunayhi Allahumma rahim mawtana wa mawta al-muslimin wa shfi mardana wa marda al-muslimin Allahumma amin Ahibbati al-kiram Dear blessed brothers, fathers, mothers and sisters there is no coincidence that you are here today. It is not by chance. It is not by an accident. Rather, it was destined. You came today here to this place at this time, at this day, for a reason. And everything in this cone is within reason, within a command by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of all creations. As I was driving here, I noticed one, one leaf falling from a tree. And my thought went to the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I marveled how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands every single aspect in this cone it is under his knowledge, his decree, his will. And no one rivals this. No one questions this. It is all under the command of Allah subhanahu wa jalla fi ula. Wa ma tasqutu min warakatin illa ya'lamuha. He says jalla fi ula. And not a single leaf falls except by his knowledge. By his command, where it will fall, how it will fall, what will happen to it. Everything within his ilm, within his knowledge, under his command, Jannah And no one rivals him in this, Jannah This brings me to the point of today. When I said that you didn't come here by coincidence or mistake or an accident, you came here for a purpose, to worship Allah, and that is the ultimate purpose. And that is your reason from the beginning to the end. You have a reason and a purpose from the beginning and after your supposed end. Because everything that has a beginning will have an end. And we have an eternal life that awaits us. Don't for a moment think that this is it. They want you to believe. YOLO. You only live once. Kadabu alaykum. They lie to you. You actually live four times. You only die once. And the greatest life, the eternal life awaits you. So don't waste your time in this dunya running after it, for you will leave it. And as you get closer to your end, we realize in the times that we are living in, that we are all collectively, as a people, are getting closer to the end. For the signs are all around us. And we are closer now to the last day than ever before. And that day is coming where the believers will say, Hada ma wa'adana Allah wa Rasulah wa sadaqallah wa Rasulah. The day is coming where we will testify that this is exactly the promise of Allah and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Undoubtedly, clearest day. La shakka fi thalik. La mahal. 
Last week I mentioned to you لما عشنا في ظل لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله I mentioned to you how the Sahaba رضي الله عنهم وأرضاهم those who implemented this great kalima this great testimony lived these words and Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم وعدهم ووعدنا and he promised them فتح اليمن وسوريا with Faris, Persia, and all of this came to be. And what is coming is more. عن عوف بن مالك رضي الله عنه وأرضاه في صحيح البخاري قال في غزوة تبوك in the battle of Tabuk, the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said words to me. And these words were memorized, were understood and held dearly by the Sahaba رضي الله عنه وارضاه. And Awf he narrates this hadith and he says, وَكُنَّا فِي غَسْوَةِ تَبُوكَ وَكَانَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ فِي قُبَّةٍ مِنْ أَدَمْ And the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم was in a leather tent. لِكَيْ يَقِيهِ مِنَ الْرِيحِ لِكَيْ تَقِيهِ مِنَ الْرِيحِ he was in a leather tent. فَجَاءَ عَوْف Awf came to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam فَسَلَّمَ عَلَيْهِ ثُمَّ استأذن. He greeted the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he asked him to come in. فَقَالَ لَهُ أُدْخُلْ He says, come in, O Awf. فَقَالَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ وَأَرْضَاهُ فَأَدْخُلُ بِكُلِّ أَوْ بِبَعْضِ He says, should I come all the way in or just halfway? I don't want to disturb you. This was the etiquette of, of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum wa rabahum. And then he said words to Awf ibn, ibn Malik radiallahu anhum wa rabah. He said to him, listen, count these six. U'dud sitten bayna yadayi sa'a. Count down six things, six aspects prior to the end of times. Meaning, the end of times will not come until these six aspects are established. The first, Mawtin. وَقَدْ مَاتَ مُحَمَّدٌ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ وَمَنْ أَرَادَ أَنْ تَهُونَ عَلَيْهِ مُصِيبَتُهَ فَلْيَتَذَكَّرْ مُصِيبَتَهُ فِي مَوْتِ النَّبِيِّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ he says, my death, for he was a human being, salawatu rabbi wa salamu And when he was on his deathbed, he was calling out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Badr rafiqi a'la, badr rafiqi a'la. As-salat, as-salat, wa ma malikat imanukum. Salawatu rabbi wa salamu And whoever wants his trial or tribulation to be eased, then let him remember the most severe trial, which was the death of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فَقَالَ عَوْفْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ أَرْضَاهُ وَجَمْتُ لَهَا وَجْمَةً شَدِيدًا When he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Mawti, my death is one of the signs تَغَيَّرَ لَهُ his complexion changed. And you can see the fear and the worry in his eyes. So Awf, radiallahu anhu arba, he said, I, I was stunned in silence, taken by sadness, to know that this is a sign of Yawm Al-Qiyamah. <laughs> then the second, Fathu Bayt al Maqdis. The hour will not be established until the Muslims will conquer and rule over Bayt al Maqdis. Palestine, Wal Aqsa al Sharif. Allahumma harr Palestine Wal Aqsa. And this happened already. During the Ahd of Umar al-Khattab, radiallahu anhu, arda, 
when he took hold of the keys of Baytul Maqdis from the hands of the Christians, Sallamuhu al Mafatih. They surrendered. And he, radiallahu anhu, arda established justice and order where the Christians and the Jews lived in peace under the shade of Islam. Historically cited. Sadaqa Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Thumma, then the third, mawtan. Wa fi riwaya, mawtatan. Ya'akudhu feekum kapu'asil khanam. The third, the hour will not be established. Until vast death will strike you, the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, as a disease that used to plague the herds. And this happened. That happened twice. The shidda. Alaf al-Sahaba. Thousands of Sahaba, 25,000 plus. Ubaid ibn Jarrah, Mu'ad ibn Jabal, radiallahu anhum, arbahum. This occurred. It happened already. We're at number three. Mawtan aw mawtatan ya'kudu fikum kapu'asil ghanam. These plagues that occurred during the Ahmed al-Sahaba, radiallahu anhum, arbahum. They wiped out thousands of Sahaba, thousands. When Matun was shaheed, and they are shuhada, inshaAllah. Thumma, then he said, number four, istifadatul mal. Hatta widespread wealth, he said. Wealth so much so that it overflows until the moment, until the time where you will give a man 100 dinars and he is still not content. And this has happened. And a thousand dinars, just so we understand, one dinar is a gold coin. Equivalent to today's value, approximately thirty-five thousand dollars. That does not even pay your rent annually. So, if you were given thirty-five thousand dollars, it doesn't do nothing for you, huh? This is due to capitalism, inflation, hyperinflation during World War Two. People used to load currency, francs and marks into wheelbarrows, hundreds of thousands of marks to go and buy a loaf of bread. Money was worthless, valueless. This has happened. We're living in those times. We lived through them already. Sadaqa Rasulullah. Thumma, and then he said number five. Fitnatun, a great trial, a test that will not leave the homes of any Arabs except illa dakhalatun. Wali waqfa huna. And we have to emphasize, why did he say this trial will affect the Arabs, the homes of the Arabs? Al Arab. The Arabs, the nomadic Arabs, were the furthest people from technology, from society. They lived as Bedou. In the deserts, nomadic tribes roaming free to and fro, far from civilization. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is specifying that this fitna that will come, this test, this trial, meaning it will affect everyone, even the nomadic Arabs. Not just the Arabs, everyone ta'um halihi fitna. It will enter every home, 
but he specified the homes of the nomadic Arabs. What is this fitna? They differed. From them, the ulama, they said, it was the murder of Uthman bin Affan. And indeed, this was a fitna that overwhelmed the lands. Some of the ulama, they said that this fitna, this trial, reaches further than that. It is wasail al i'lam. It is the widespread communication, the internet, the advertisements, and every single home, every single square inch of the world has been affected. It has reached all parts of the world. Every cave, every hole, every hut, every tent, this fitna has reached. وَيُرَجِّحُ ذَلِكْ قَوْلُ حُذَيْفَ بْنُ الْيَمَانِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ وَرَضَاهُ Hudayfa ibn Yaman, he says something that emphasizes this point, that it is the internet and telecommunication. He says, لَيُوشِكَنَّ أَنْ يُصَبُّ عَلَيْكُمُ الشَّرُّ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ حَتَّى يَبْلُغَ الْفَيَافِ حَتَّى يَبْلُغَ الْفَيَافِ فَقِيلَ وَمَا الْفَيَافِ يَا أَبَا عَبْدِ اللَّهِ قَالَ الْأَرْضُ الْقَفَرِ he said, رضي الله عنه وأرضاه, It is without doubt that a punishment في رواية فتنة في رواية قطر من السماء Drops will come from the sky as a fitna, as a test, as a trial that will affect Al-Fayafi. What is Al-Fayafi? He said the nomadic lands, the barren lands with the barren people and the nomadic tribes. And the satellites, they transmit signals like that. Sadaqa Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa In another opinion is that this fitna will enter every home. It is called debt. Debt. And if you read statistics, you will be shocked. Every child that is born is actually born into debt, specifically in North America. Thousands of dollars because we are living beyond our means. And that debt is due to interest, which is from the kabair, from the greatest sins. And this interest has affected everyone, even those who don't want nothing to do with it, are touched by the hubar, by the dust. That it sends out. فَصَدَقَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ Then number six, and this is the last one, and I want you all to pay very close attention. Lend me your eyes, your ears, and your hearts. ثُمَّ قَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ سَتَكُونُ هُدْنَةً there will be a moment, a time, a period of peace between you and Banu al-Asfar, between you and the yellow, the son, the children of the yellow, meaning the Romans. And they will go against the peace tree. This hudna, we don't know when it will happen, how it will happen, but we know from other hadith that before this peace treaty between us and the Romans, then with Asfar, we will fight side by side a relative enemy, a common enemy, and we will be victorious against this enemy. Upon this, 
victory that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will establish for the Muslims. Banu al-Asfar, the Romans, will stab us in the back. And they will come under 80 flags. Upon each flag is 10,000 wafiriwa, 12,000 strong. And this is the war <coughs> that is called Al Malhamatul Kubra. Summiat Malhama. Likathrati Al Luhum al Lati Tukata. It is not called a war or a battle. It is called the flesh, the meat that is being cut. Thousands upon thousands, millions will die. And just so you know, this is the exact malhama, the war that will precede al-Masih al-Dajjal, al-Kadhab al-A'war. So five have already come and gone. The last one, we are at its doors. And I just want to be clear, abundantly clear, we do not want to fight or harm anyone. We are not here for that. We have objectives as Muslims to uphold justice, to uphold the truth. Maqasid al-Sharia ma'awuf. All Muslims should know the objectives of this deen. Hifd al-deen, to protect the deen. Hifd al-aql, to uphold the aql. Hifd al-nafs. To uphold and protect all life. Hifd al-mal. To uphold all people's wealth. Hifd al-nasl. To protect people's honor. We are the people of justice and truth. We do not kill aimlessly. We are not barbarians. We are the people of justice. And we establish rights and justice for all creations. But no farewell. That if you threaten any of these maqasid, any of these objectives, we will die to defend them. No doubt. This is justice. So he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the last one will be a war between you and Banu Al-Asfar. And this war is a war of existence. This is the final war, the war to end all wars. <clears throat> and subhanAllah, as I mentioned to you, we are literally on that page. <clears throat> Astaghfirullah wa lakum min kulli dhanbi fastaghfiruhu fa innahu huwa al-ghafur rahim I will ask the brothers to move forward inshallah the gym is full move forward Without doubt, we are near the end of times. Closer than ever, as I mentioned. And the closer we get to the end of times, to the akhirah, the further the people move away from the deen and the truth. For us as Muslims, we must come closer to this deen of Allah. We must come closer to the Quran and the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فَقَدْ قَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ فِي الصَّحِيحِ تَرَكْتُ فِيكُمْ أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ مَا إِنْ اَعْتَصَمْتُمْ بِهِ فِي رِوَايَةَ تَمَسَّكْتُمْ بِهِ فَلَنْ تُظِلُّ أَبَدًا he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I have left you with two aspects. If you hold firmly to them, 
Grasp firmly to them. You will never go astray. You will never be misled. You will never be misguided. You will never be deceived. The Quran, Kitab Allah, Kalam Allah, Wa Sunnati, Kama Qal Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. These are the two aspects. And if you want Jannah, if you want prosperity, if you want peace, please, brothers, sit down. Where you are, sit down. Jazakumullah khair. If you want justice, if you want peace, if you want the purpose, the reason, the reward, it is in La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. Mu'ad ibn Jabal, he said, I was with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he asked me a question. Look at this question, and Mu'ad was a young man. He says, oh Mu'ad, do you know the rights of Allah over his slaves? Su'al Adim. Deep, deep question. Mu'ad replied, with a beautiful reply. <coughs> he said, the Messenger of Allah and Allah know best. Remember what I said, the obedience of Muhammad and the obedience of Allah. Ta'atum <laughs> al He said, if they worship Allah, he said the rights of Allah upon his slaves is that they worship him alone without any association. Thumma <laughs> second. And then he went silent, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. For a moment, for a period of time, Mu'ad narrates. And then he asked again another question. He says, Ya Mu'ad, atadri, mahaqqul ibad an Allah. He says, oh Mu'ad, do you know the rights of the slaves over Allah? And he subhanallah, yalfit al Rasulullah is, is giving us insight to something remarkable. We have a right over Allah. You are His creation. Lam takun shay'an madhura. You are nothing. You were not mentioned. He gave you a right. Over him, Jannah fi So Mu'ad, he replied, Labbaika ya Rasulullah. You know in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala know. فَقَالَ النَّبِيُّ الصَّادِقُ الْمَصْدُوقُ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمِ اسْمَعُونَ Listen. He says, if they worship him alone, without any association, فَلَا يُحَذِّبَ He will not punish them. وَفِي رِوَايَةً They are guaranteed Jannah. They will enter Jannah without any punishment. هَذَا حَقُّكْ مَعَ اللَّهِ that is the first part. And as I mentioned last week, it's not complete without Muhammad Rasulullah. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Kullun min ummati yadkhulun al Jannah illa man aba. He said, Everyone from my ummah. Indiscriminate. Everyone from my ummah. Meaning from his time till the end of times. Will enter Jannah except those who don't want to enter. Sahaba, istabrabu, they say. Woman ya'ba. How could someone not want to enter Jannah? How is this possible? Na'imun la yanfad. Faqala al-Nabiyu al-Saliq al Said, man ata'ani. دَخَلَ الْجَنَّةِ وَمَنْ عَصَانِي فَقَدْ أَبَى Whoever obeys Abu Al-Qasim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam تَمَسَّكَ بِسُنَّتِهِ Whoever upholds his sunnah وَلَمْ يَبْتَدِعْ Who does not perform bid'ah Who obeys Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam They will enter Jannah And whoever disobeys Will be denied and rejected وَلَعِيَادُ بِاللَّهِ Indeed, this is the reason and this is the purpose you came here today. Don't think that it's an accident or a coincidence. Not for a moment. Every, every 
second of your life has a reason and a purpose. And it is all under the banner of La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. And if you are afraid of the end of times, if you feel anxiety, you should. You should, because there are trying times coming ahead. We are living in times of doubt and deception. So there is a sense of anxiety, a sense of fear. وَمَنْ خَافَ أَدْلَجْ وَمَنْ أَدْلَجْ بَلِغَ الْمَنْزِلِ أَلَا إِنَّ سِلْعَةَ اللَّهِ غَالِيَةً أَلَا إِنَّ سِلْعَةَ اللَّهِ جَنَّةً Whoever is afraid will take heed, take precaution. They will be steadfast. They will reach the destination with work and effort, with tawakkul على الله. And the reward is Jannah. And that is the highest reward. اللهم ردنا إليك ردا جميلا اللهم اهدنا في من هديت وعافنا في من عافيت وتولنا اللهم في من توليت رحماك اللهم بالأطفال اليتامى والنساء الثكالى والشباب الحيارى اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم انصر المستضعفين في سبيلك وابتغاء مرضاتك اللهم انصر المجاهدين في سبيلك اللهم تبت قلوبهم تبت أقدامهم تسدد رميهم وانصرهم على عدونا وعدوهم يا عزيز يا جبار اللهم عليك بأعدائنا أعداء الدين اللهم عليك بأعدائنا أعداء الدين اللهم عليك بالصهائنة الظالمين وعليك بيهود العرب المتآمرين اللهم وحد صفوفنا وثبت قلوبنا واجعل كلمتنا آخر كلامنا لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله واجعل موتنا شهادة ودماءنا مسكا وصلي اللهم وسلم وبارك وأنعم على النبي المصطفى على الرسول المجتمع وآله وصحابه أجمعين الحمد لله رب العالمين المولى صلاة الله